Michael, uh, you are in the parking business. The parking was just brought up. I was going to bring it up later, but it's a major issue in, in downtown. Um, although at the same time, every time I sit down with a client, we talk about designing a new building or coming up with, with code compliant parking or even just functional parking. We have some people saying, well, in 10 years, there's going to be autonomous vehicles are going to run, render these obsolete. On the other hand, everyone's going for such a density now with their office layouts that um, we need even more parking than, than code. Um, what do you think the solution is? Where do you think things are going with parking in downtown? Yeah, it's definitely a balance. That's, uh, every project is unique, and different from, from each other. Um, really, the main goal, the first step, is right-sizing your parking. Um, really take a look at the, the project you're working on, the development, working with the developer, the city, and uh, identifying the amount of parking needed for your particular project, whether it's a you know, a residential project, um, is it appropriate to have uh, more than one parking space per unit? Maybe families in this particular development, um, they only have one car. They don't, you know, not every family is gonna have more than one car, or maybe millennials don't have cars at all. Um, they're just not interested in that. Um, so just you know, thinking, are we providing the right amount of spaces for the use? And you know, taking into account um, Proximity of public transportation that plays into a factor of it um, for hotel projects keeping in mind for example um, The majority of business travelers are going to take your uber a lift To the hotel. They're not going to have a their own vehicle that they're bringing in that that needs to be parked Just taking into account those different um, issues and Yeah, with autonomous vehicles coming up, there's the chance that in the future, less parking will be needed. Um, manufacturers are saying that um, in the next two to five years, autonomous vehicles are going to be coming out, uh, but we don't think um, a switch is going to get flipped and everyone's going to abandon their traditional cars and be using autonomous vehicles. Um, but what we try to do is, with, with our owners, start thinking about you know, adaptive reuse. These, these projects are gonna be built and lasting for, for decades to come. And how do you foresee wanting to use that space uh, in the future maybe when there is less parking? So you're designing parking structures to be converted later to another use? When possible, possible. We, we try to open up the discussion with the owner. Um, a lot of times it's difficult for them to, once you present uh, the different issues that need to be taken into account to accommodate adaptive reuse in the future, um, there's a premium to it. And so sometimes, you know, just to kind of throw a number out there, it could be a 20% increase in construction cost. Um, do they want to put that investment in day one or kind of deal with it, with it later? Um, it's a lot easier to do it during the design phase and then trying to adapt later to do it, um, but definitely things to keep in mind. What we try to encourage uh, developers or, and owners to, um, if, if they're not going to take steps to plan for adaptive reuse in the future, you know, at least think about loading areas, drop off and pick up areas, because a lot of people now are using Uber and Lyft, um, you know, even taxis. But carve out that space now, you know, some, 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 some time of courtyard area or maybe it's a court cashier in a parking structure area, but allocate that space now. Um, it's limited investment up front, um, but you have the space there um, to kind of serve those functions as they grow and develop into the future.